Terracotta soldiers, eggs with what on them? That's right, it's time for the top 10 messed up things that happened in ancient China. Number 10, feet pics. There's a lot of people on the internet, and a lot of those people are kind of strange. But perhaps the strangest group on the interwebs are the same people who enjoy the interwebbing of toes. Yep, looking at the people who love feed pics. Hey, I'm not judging. All I'm saying is that I'm gonna keep my Air Force Ones away from you guys. I don't want you guys looking at my Air Force Ones. Don't look at my Air Force Ones like that. Where does such a phenomenon come from? Well, it may be ancient China and its tradition of foot binding. Yes, if you didn't know, it was a custom for women to bind their feet into a very unique shape, said to have been inspired by the emperor's ladies of the evening after a most graceful dance. Women in China wanted to follow suit and started binding their feet. What's crazy is how crazy their feet looked afterwards. A painful process that often had ill side effects. Toenails would often become ingrown and cause infection. Sometimes nails were removed completely to prevent infection. If you gotta remove your toenails to wear shoes, I don't know if that's good for you. Thankfully this has fallen out of practice and is kept away from the people who have a thing for feet. Number 9. You and what army? If there was an invention that would make you rich, it would be something that allows you to bring your favorite possessions into the afterlife. Egyptians wanted to bring gold and kitties. Vikings were buried with swords. I mean, after all, you can't go to heaven without a piece. I get it. And when I pass on, like many folks of my generation, we will take crippling anxiety and depression with us. Or so we'll try. Many have tried to take many different things into the afterlife, but strangely, they all get left behind here. The most obtuse example of this is the Terracotta Army. You might have heard of this one before, but honestly, it's so cool. Emperor Qin woke up one morning and thought, hey, what if I need an army in the afterlife? So, a Terracotta Army was constructed. I didn't think there was this many, but there's actually over 6,000 life-size Terracotta soldiers who originally wielded real swords and blades. Building an army to protect you in the afterlife is a bold move, Emperor. Number eight. Unified Workforce Today it takes a lot of hard work to be next to the president. A lot of education, a small loan of a million dollars, and yes manning your way up Capitol Hill. It is a tried and true formula. However, politicians and advisors of ancient China had a rather different and messed up price to pay to be on the emperor's side. A lot of the emperor's advisors were eunuchs, which if you didn't know, it's somebody who had their meat in veg removed if you know what I'm saying. Usually a punishment for a crime, but sometimes self-inflicted to join the ranks of the emperor's court. Yeah, that's right. Dudes were racing to do that to themselves so they could be a part of the emperor's court. These guys even held some power, actually, a surprising amount. Part of the thought was if you couldn't give birth to a child or a successor, then you wouldn't feel the Sith-like urge to power grab and overthrow the Emperor. While I'm sure this may have been effective at first, somebody had to be questioning these methods. Between a bag full of criminal sausage and the guy on the chopping block, this is really messed up. Number 7, Yellow Crystals. I hope you're not eating breakfast while listening to this part, but here we go. To make a long story short, ancient China is credited with inventing endocrinology. This involves separating hormones from human secretions. That word sounds really gross. How did ancient China accomplish hormone studies without microscopes, lab coats, and a government budget? Ancient Chinese secret. Nah, I'm just kidding, they use pee. You get the whole village together, right? Which includes 150 men, and then they all urinate into a pot. You cook the said yellow mixture of evil, and you boil it down till there's nothing left but crystals. You can't inject things yet, because there's no needles, so the only way to get it in you is eating it. Oh yeah, that's right sports fans, eating yellow rocks for medicinal purposes. Urine was thought to have some sort of medicinal property, so I, I guess this makes sense? I come on over man, come have some, my wanna, wanna try my soup dude? I got some, got some pea soup bro. Number six, eggs a la pee pee. Continuing with the theme of the warm yellow stuff, we got a cuisine item here that I'm not sure most folks at home would want. I'm sure you guys would pass this up. In the ancient city of Dongyang, a delicacy called something that you two won't let me say, the recipe goes as follows. Pot of eggs, check. Add some urine from people under the age of 18. And boil. Like mentioned before, the golden liquid is supposed to have some sort of medicinal properties. This is usually the part of the script where after my mildly funny joke, I diffuse the chaos by stating that certain practices like these are no longer done. Went away with the old time, we didn't want it anymore. 
Oh, on the contraire, my cyber surfing friends. Weirdly enough, it is still done today. It's said that the taste is like that of springtime. Winter is my favorite season anyway. This is just one of the things you'll just never forget. Number five, Cricket Gladiator. They say that if bread is the first necessity of life, then recreation is a close second. A quote that the ancient Chinese lived by. Blood sport being a common denominator of the day. So were the Chinese warriors dueling it out with martial arts and unique fighting techniques? Or cricket fights? Ah, yeah, you guessed it, cricket fights. Cricket fights were a form of gambling and hobby that pitted male crickets against one another. This was the real deal too. These crickets were treated like prize horses today. These bad boys were bred for the sport, extremely violent and ready to destroy. Actually, unlike other harsh and cruel gambling sports, cricket fighting often didn't end up harming the cricket. While being kept in a clay pot, they were fed good diets and even had female crickets dropped in the pot right before a fight. Just so the little guys know what he was fighting for out there. You go get him, Tiger. Go get him. Number four of lice and men. You guys love your hygiene videos, as we've done a lot here on this channel. And you don't need an expert to tell you that as humans, we did some really gross stuff in the past. Well, if this doesn't make you want to refund your lunch, I don't know what does. Folks back in ancient China had a lice problem. You might be thinking to yourself, oh, I had lice as a kid. <laughs> That's no big deal. Well, back then it was. See, people had so many lice that people would just pick them off and eat them. I mean, come on. Are you really gonna let all that juicy protein go to waste? Doctors would recommend eating ash to aid people that had stomach aches from consuming too many of the bugs. They also used lice to determine how healthy someone was. If lice were crawling all over the person, they would live. But if the lice were jumping off the person like a rat fleeing a sinking ship, they would not live. You can tell this was a time of great medical knowledge and understanding. With that logic, a corpse with flies around it still has a good chance of making it to work the next morning. Number three, the Black Death. This Silk Road was an economic and political trade agreement made and traveled by empires in Asia and Eastern Europe on multiple trade routes that expanded culture, technology, and learning. But of course, that wasn't the only thing being exchanged. Unfortunately for traders and people just trying to live their lives, the bubonic plague was making its rounds and spreading along the Silk Road. Sadly, the bubonic plague would claim millions of lives across the old world. The grossest part being the acral necrosis. Acral necrosis is the black discoloration of the skin of the extremities due to decreased blood supply to the affected areas. That lovely symptom is probably how it became to be known as the Black Death. Thanks, Silk Road. Number two, scabs are us. The Black Death might have been the biggest and baddest disease of the ancient world, but it wasn't the only one. There were other bad characters in that bunch. Meet smallpox, another very contagious disease that would start with a red rash and develop into small pustules. They then turned into scabs and fell off. Top Chinese doctors at the time thought, hey, what if we give the scabs to people in hopes they build an immunity? like some sort of pseudo-barbaric vaccine. So they took scabs from sick patients, and after for sure washing their hands, crushed the scabs into a powder and blew it up people's noses with a pipe. It kinda worked, but a lot of people died in the process. Man, what a time to be alive, or maybe dead. With healthcare like that, you're probably just not gonna live too long anyway. Number one, the century of humiliation. The 1800s were not a hot time for China, and yes, I can hear you, I know what you're gonna say. It wasn't exactly ancient times. The 1800s are kind of considered to be modern times, but, but China had one little problem. China had been pillaged and bullied by foreign powers, which if you couldn't tell is never good for your country. And really, you need to sit down in history class to fully understand everything that was going on up to this point. China just wasn't as modern as the other countries at the time and still had a feudal dynasty in a sense. The point I'm trying to get to is the Taiping Rebellion was messed up. Multiple factors led and caused the rebellion and like I always say, it wouldn't be good history without a little blood. And after the Opium Wars, which was involved with that and a cause and effect, a famine and some other diseases that actually weren't pee related, millions were dead as the century did become to know the century of humiliation. That's gonna wrap it up for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your host, Andrew Castongay, AKA Big Ched. If you'd like to see more of me, my socials are linked down in the description. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe here on Bumblebee, and I will see you soon. Stay sweet, my little honeybees. <laughs> Tastes like spring, come have a taste of my, my son's pee. It's really good, pee's good. <laughs> I don't know why my voice cracked there. George, it's really scary. <laughs> to make a long story short, ancient China is credited with inventing 
endocrinology, I believe I'm endocrinology. Do I bruh. Number six, eggs a la pee pee. <laughs> That's, <laughs> okay, I guess, be serious, it's serious, like it's serious. Oh, yeah, I can do an outro. I forgot, I work here. Hi, I work here sometimes. Edler's gonna like that. Why did he walk off like an idiot?